living in the streets was uh, interesting. Walking in the same shoes and the same socks for days at a time. Hungry, cold in the winter time. Um, not having enough layers on. Not having anywhere to lay your head. And you're hurting and you're in pain. I was adopted when I was a baby. I was about a week old. And a beautiful family came and got me and adopted me. I was very close to my dad. We'd spend a lot of time together. We had spent a lot of time together on the farm. I grew up on the farm feeding the chickens and the cows and doing some baling of hay and driving tractors, you know. And by the time I hit the age of nine, a very traumatic event happened in my life. Uh, my father passed away. For him to be gone one day was one of the hardest things in my life, right? And not being taught correctly how to grieve was one of the biggest things that contributed to the hurts and pains that, that came from that. I was told by my family and my friends that, uh, you know, that I need to grow up and I need to move forward. The first couple years after my father's death that the structure of the home broke down, right? At the age of 14, I started staying out later and engaging with drugs and, and drinking a lot. The next thing you know, um, I was in a downward spiral, right? And uh, it kept getting worse and worse as I, as I progressed, right? A big part of it was the acceptance of, of that subculture, right? And I continued to engage in that subculture, not only engaging in the use, but engaging in the people and the lifestyle. I met a lady that was uh, in, in the same hometown I was in Westlock, right? And she is Aboriginal, right? So um, for me, being Aboriginal and knowing that, we decided to have two babies. So we had two boys and very lovely boys. I was a part of their growing up for the first five years of their lives. One weekend, I was introduced to crack cocaine. They say that your first hit, you're addicted, right? So um, my first hit, I was addicted. As I continued to feel my habit, the more I got, the more I needed to, to consume, right? The consequences of the lifestyle was, was very traumatic as well, you know, not only um, being homeless, um, not eating, um, not taking care of my spiritual, emotional self, my well-being. Um, I also ended up in prison, right? So um, I lost my family, I lost my children, um, I lost my freedom, right? And those are all things that, uh, that were very important to me, and, and, but it didn't matter, right? The crack mattered, and the crack was the one that was controlling my life. A good friend of mine named Darren used to come down and check on me in the homeless shelter, and uh, he, we had a good relationship, right? And he would say, you ready to quit yet? You know, there's a place I know that we can go and and talk and uh, a place where we can get you clean and sober, right? Darren just, uh, he said there was a bed open. Then I would tell him I wasn't ready. But I think it was about 2009, 2010, I hit rock bottom. There was that one day, it was uh, actually a snowy day and it was uh, early in the morning, 6 a.m. And I just felt the promptings to, you know, I'm done, right? So I made a call to the Dream Center where Darren said there would be a bed open for me and uh, I remember that day very well and as I walked through the doors of the Dream Center the staff there they showed me that that I'm important and that I deserve a break right and I deserve to move forward in my recovery the first session that they were talking about was grief and uh, and it was a God moment right because um, because uh, of my father, right? And uh, so God was showing me that this is what I need to deal with. The Dream Center helped with my hope because they taught me if I have hope for myself that I can show it to others, right? They taught me a new way of living. So graduation for me was, uh, was a big part of my life. and. Right now, I'm presently uh, at Bull Valley taking Aboriginal Addictions Counseling, not only to learn, but to achieve the goals that I, I want to achieve, right? Some of the dreams I have is just to have more, 
to do with my family and my friends and um, especially my children. I am now working as a community case manager for the, for the Dream Center, helping people pick up pieces of their broken lives. The mission I have working at the Dream Center is to help men to realize that they're worth investing in. I lived on the streets for 10 years, going through the, the depths of homelessness, uh, addiction, hurts and pains, and coming out on the other end and realizing that I have a lot of wealth that I can show and mentor to other men that are coming through the program and show them that they are loved, right, and that they're worth investing in. It's very important to show others that hope is possible, right? And that's what the Dream Center does for me.